Hello everyone and welcome to this session. In this session we are going to discuss about permanent insurance. So in the last session we talked about term insurance. So in this session we are going to continue our discussion and discuss permanent insurance. So the first type of permanent insurance policy is a whole life insurance policy. So let's read through the PowerPoint and let's unpack like the concepts regarding it. So what is the whole life policy? So let me just do this again. I was not getting the cursor. So whole life policy is the most traditional type of permanent insurance, which is intended to provide coverage for all as long as the life insured lives. So whole life means the policy is going to pay, right? If your client is getting a whole life policy, the policy is going to pay when the client dies, right? whenever that happens throughout his lifetime the face amount of the insurance policy and the premiums are established at the time the policy is purchased and remain fixed throughout the time that the policy remains in force so when you approach an insurance company for a whole life policy they will they will decide the face value that they are willing to offer so you propose it let's say you want five hundred thousand dollars of face value it means the death benefit is going to be five hundred thousand dollars the moment the client dies they are going to get paid five hundred thousand dollars so you propose that to a life insurance company the life insurance company then decides whether they might give you or not okay and based on your rating how risky they feel you are as an individual right they will decide the premium the premium premium stay same throughout the lifetime of the policy a whole life policy may also be known as straight life policy or ordinary life policy okay so the concept of level premium applies to whole life policy it means the premium that you pay is actually higher than the cost of mortality right in the initial years of the policy but the premium becomes less than the actual mortality charges right in the later years of the policy so let's unpack this what is the actual mortality charge actual mortality charge means how much cost would the life insurance company have in case a person let's say of a 25 year old uh, person dies so that is the actual mortality cost let's say it is $200 so $200 is the cost for paying out the face value in case the person is 25 year old but you can see the whole life policy the premium will be higher than the actual mortality cost so it might be $300 that a 25 year old is paying but as he ages as the person ages the mortality cost is going to go up right so the cost goes up but the premium stays same so there comes a point when the premium is actually less than the cost of mortality for a life insurance company so how is the plan designed so this is quite interesting a whole life policy has a reserve so what is a reserve a reserve is the total amount of premiums you have paid plus the interest earned on those premiums right minus the mortality and plan expenses that the insurance company face so whatever premiums you pay into the whole life policy right if you're not making any claims those premiums will slowly start earning interest and the insurance company will deduct the mortality and the plan expense charge right so let's say they have 100 people that they are insuring so they will derive the cost that they are incurring per policy right and that cost is deducted right from the reserve from the accumulating reserves okay every term so it works something like this so let's assume you're getting a five hundred thousand dollar death benefit policy okay and the yearly premium you're paying let's say six thousand dollars so over a period of time right as you pay premiums if you do not make any claims the reserve starts building up 
okay so let's say at the age of 40 your reserve is $200,000 and the death benefit is $500,000 so this part this area right is the cost that the insurance company is bearing is the risk that the insurance company is taking but as you can see as the reserve starts building because of re interest and premium additions there comes a point when the insurance company has no risk because the reserves in the policy itself are equal to death benefit okay <clears throat> now a whole life policy has different terms so first term that you might need to be aware of is cash value so what is cash value the portion of reserves that the insurance carrier is willing to give back to the policy owner as a non forfeiture right so it's the amount of money that the so this is the reserve so from this reserve how much money is the insurance company willing to give you back if you give up the policy right cash surrender value is a better determinant because it also consider the charges because cash value will just give you how much the company is willing to give but from that willing to be given amount right the life insurance company will deduct cash surrender charges so they will have charges that they will deduct in case you ask the policy to be surrendered okay so let's unpack this a little bit you might want to surrender a whole life policy when you surrender a whole life policy usually you get something back now what is that something back that something back is the cash surrender value okay so if the policy owner terminates her whole life insurance coverage the cash value in the policy would be paid to the plan owner less any surrender charges so it is simply cash value minus the surrender charges okay now this is very interesting certain policies certain whole life policies are participating policies participating policies means you share in the performance of the insurance company if the insurance company does well they will give you some dividends right as a policy owner so whole life policy where owners of the policy share in the profits of the insurance company through the receipt of dividends this is the participating policy so participating policy actually accumulate quite a bit of reserves because they get additional dividends too then it could be a non-participating policy a non-participating whole life policy is a policy where the policy owner does not participate in any profit for the insurance carrier what is a dividend a dividend is paid to the owner of a participating policy is considered to be equivalent of a refund of premium so dividend paid is usually not taxed right because it is considered to be a refund of premium that they are giving you <clears throat> so like we discussed when you surrender a whole life policy there are surrender charges so what are surrender charges the cost of issuing an insurance policy is quite substantial and it takes several years of insurance premium for the insurance carrier to break even on the expenses associated with issuing the policy for this reason permanent insurance policy also often include a surrender charge when the policy is cancelled so if you cancel a whole life policy or even a other types of like universal life policy in the initial years you're not going to get much money back right because the surrender charges itself are massive these charges tend to be quite high in the early years of the policy and reduce as the time proceeds now what are premiums premiums for whole life policies are paid in advance of the coverage period that is if you are paying a monthly premium you have to pay it at the start of the month before the policy take hold the premium schedule can be developed as an integral part of the plan design and can be paid annually quarterly or even monthly so you can decide how you want to pay the premium now if you have a whole life policies there are multiple options for you to access money so one option is policy loans so what is a policy loan 
Generally, as the whole life policy ages, the buildup of cash value begins to accumulate and many policies offer the policy owners the ability to borrow funds from the cash value in the policy with defined limits. If the policy is surrender when the policy loan is outstanding, any loan balance and the interest indebtedness is repaid from the cash surrender value. So what does this mean? Let's say you have a $50,000 cash value, cash surrender value that you have accumulated in the policy, right? So you can take that money out as a policy loan from the insurance company. So whatever money you take out, right, you will be charged interest on that right you have two options now you can either pay off the loan or you can keep the loan as it is but when the death benefits are paid the insurance company is is going to deduct that loan that fifty thousand dollar loan plus interest from the death proceeds okay so they will deduct the loan first and then pay the death proceeds you can also use it as a collateral collateral assignment collateral assignment means you can use the policy right as a collateral to a loan from a financial institution so in the policy loan part you are actually borrowing from the insurance company but in a collateral assignment you are borrowing from a financial institution not a insurance company so collateral assignment a policy owner can assign the policy itself or the policy's cash value which has built up over time as a security for the loan where the creditor is someone other than the insurance company so you can use that policy as a collateral go to a bank and withdraw like borrow money from them with collateral assignment the policy owner offers the policy as the security for the loan then whole life policies have a death benefit so the death benefit paid under a life insurance policy is comprised of the policy's face amount plus any enhancement for example if you have a participating policy the face amount may be 500000 plus o- but over a period of time because of dividends and stuff right the face value might have grown the accumulated value in the policy might have grown above the face value in that case you will all you will get money right in addition to the face value when the death benefit is paid out under the policy any indebtedness such as the policy loan or outstanding premium will reduce the total amount of benefit paid to the beneficiary so any loan right or any outstanding premium you have that will be deducted first and then the death benefits will be paid so non forfeiture option the contract for a permanent life insurance policy set out the options available to the policy owner if she decides to discontinue premium premium payments on a life insurance policy that has accumulated cash value known as forfeiture option so forfeiture option means if you have some cash value in your policy right but you do not want to continue paying premium then you can use this cash value right to do certain things so these things are you can take out the cash value right so whatever is the cash surrender value you can take the cash out you can use the cash surrender value to automatically pay the premiums so automatic premium loan so you keep the insurance until the cash value runs out you can use the cash value to buy extended term insurance so use cash to buy as much term insurance as possible right then you can use it to reduce the paid up insurance so buy as much permanent insurance from the cash you have accumulated and as the company allows you to do it so non-forfeiture means you stop paying premiums what happens after that the cash value that you have accumulated can be used for multiple right factors you can take out the cash you can use it right to pay premiums of whatever premiums you can you can buy in term insurance or you can buy permanent insurance using that okay so the next topic is universal life insurance so the difference between whole life and a universal life policy is universal life policy has an investment component so whatever premium you pay 
part of that goes to covering your risk that is insurance part of that right it goes towards investments now that investments can happen in the debt market bonds and government debt or it can happen in the stock market too okay so life insurance life, universal life insurance policies gives you an ability to use insurance as an investment so they are relatively new having first become popular in the 1980s when the traditional insurance products did not seem to meet the changing needs of consumers soaring interest rates combined with consumers interest in managing their own investment created a demand for new insurance product a universal life policy is a type of permanent insurance designed to address the long term needs and includes various components that provides choice choices for consumers the features are right varying amount of coverage payment flexibility interest sensitive investment so what what does it mean it means the coverage that you get might change if the investment value of your policy increases right than the face value you're going to get a better higher coverage then there is payment flexibility the insurance payment is fixed the risk payment is fixed but the investment payment that goes along with it you have flexibility regarding that and you can put your money in interest sensitive investments like let's say government bonds or like corporate bonds or even stock market so the three main factors used in pricing an insurance products includes mortality cost right the cost of covering your risk the expenses that the insurance company has and the expected returns on the premiums or contributions into the plan with a universal life policy the word contribution or deposits are often substituted for the p- word premium why because premium only means risk coverage but in this policy you're also contributing towards an investment so that's why those words are more used the three main components identified under each universal life policies include mortality charges under the policy those are fixed expenses charged by the carrier of the policy they change right they keep on changing and investment earnings within the policy this is also this also keeps on changing okay so what are mortality charges So at the time of purchase, the policy owner decides the type of mortality charge that will apply under the policy. There are variety of options to choose from, but the most common are term to hundred, right? So you usually buy a term to hundred policy in which your premium is fixed, right? And you get insurance for you get a permanent insurance. So if anything happens, the death benefits are paid. so that can be yearly term rates based on probability that death will occur in the upcoming year or level term rates most people go for level term rates so you pay a fixed premium for the term of the insurance contract considering the increasing cost associated with an increasing probability of death each year so this is the first part so universal life has the premium that you pay a percentage of that premium goes towards right buying permanent insurance for yourself then apart from that they also have expense charges so the policy generally includes a monthly administration fee and possible transaction fee related to administrative services and the third part is some part of the premium goes towards investment So universal life policies provides the policy owner with a range of investment options that generally include fixed interest options such as simple savings account, guaranteed term deposits, right and other interest rate options, then equity options or index options. So you can buy like interest in stock market or interest in an particular index, right? So example TSX 60 or TSX composite these are two stock market indexes in canada so you can buy like interest in them so if the indexes go up right you get returns from that now cash surrender value right for a ui universal life policy is cash value minus 
sum of any policy loan outstanding plus any applicable surrender charges surrender charges tend to be very high in the early years of the policy and they decrease throughout time as the policy ages <coughs> okay now what are the death benefits you are going to get the first is like simple like permanent policy term 200 in which the benefits are fixed level phase so it provides a fixed level amount of insurance using which the insurance ca carrier's cost of insurance decreases over time as the policies accumulates value so whole life policy is also an example you keep on building the policy right reserves right Be beyond a point the reserves cover for the uh, death benefit so the insurance company doesn't face any risk then there is level phase plus deposits so it combines the face amount of the policy and the gross amount of deposits made into the plan so you get a fixed amount plus the deposits add on to your plan the deposits generally happen when the com insurance company is profitable so they can share those profits with you then level phase plus account value pays the beneficiary the face amount of the policy plus the value held within the policy amount or it could be index death benefit in which death benefits keep on increasing on an annual basis most of the time the increase is linked to the inflation rate again non forfeiture option provides the policy owner with alternatives if she chooses to discontinue paying the premiums under the universal life policy the mortality and the expense charge must be covered annually for the policy to remain in force for those plans that build up cash value in the accumulating account the annual mortality and the expense charge are withdrawn withdrawn from the accumulating account so what different options we have we can take a policy loan so we can borrow money against the cash value of your policy from the insurance company any amount up to the cash surrender value right of the policy is available to the policy owner as a policy loan okay the last type of policy that we have is term 200 it's very similar to whole life policy so term 200 insurance is a type of permanent insurance that provides insurance coverage to the age 100 in many situations the coverage remains in force after the life insured reaches 100 but there are no further premium payments required generally the premiums for term 200 policies are level and guaranteed so you pay a fixed premium the term 200 policy is non-participating so it's a non-participating policy in which you do not benefit from the insurance company making money <clears throat> the design of term 200 can differ by carrier while some plans require a premium up to the age of 100 other other carriers can establish a premium schedule with limited premiums for 20 25 or up to the age of 65 while the older term to plans do not normally have a buildup of cash value some carriers may offer a guaranteed value if the plan remains in force for a specified time <clears throat> but most policies don't have a cash buildup value the premium schedule for term 200 plan will appear higher in the earlier years of the policy when compared to a five year or a term, 10 year term policy because the premium schedule is level throughout the term 200 policy payment the cost of term 200 plan is generally less than for a comparable whole life policy because the term 200 plan does not normally have traditional build up so it's a little cheaper than a comparable whole life policy because it doesn't have a build up of cash value if the policy owner misses a premium payment the standard grace payment grace period applies but because there is no cash value there are no options for automatic premium payment from within the policy and the policy will lapse so this is the risk if you buy term 200 policy the premium will be very expensive as compared to a five year or a 10 year term but right the problem is if you miss a premium and the grace period gets over the policy can last lapse 
exempt and non-exempt given that the term 200 policy is designed with the primary purpose of providing insurance protection only the plan remains exempt with no income tax reporting required so you don't have to pay any income tax on the death benefits the last type of permanent insurance is a group life insurance group life insurance mostly provided by your employer so they have a very standard term so it is common for employers to provide group benefits as an integral part of an employee's compensation program the scope of group benefit is quite wide and can include life insurance dependent life insurance health and dental as well as disability benefits while the group life insurance is commonly part of employees benefit package it is also fairly common for associations to offer group life insurance to participating members so it's mostly standard so your employer will decide this term and it is mostly standard there are variations in the type of group insurance plan available to individuals but the general principles remain consistent across plan so the basic principle are the policy owner is not you in this case it is the employer or the association generally it is the union the life insured is probably the employee you need to be active at work so you need to be working in order to get the coverage right the coverage is standard usually a multiple of your annual salary two times or three times is common so if you have a salary let's say of 100000 so two times coverage is 200000 coverage the premiums are usually paid by the employer so basic group life insurance offered through an employer plan is normally designed as a flat amount or a multiple of like plan members annual earning most insured carriers offer coverage for as long as the individual is employed up to the age of 65 the group life insurance is one year renewable term insurance that provides temporary insurance protection only such as employee provided group life insurance so it is a one year contract that renews okay the life insurance and it is temporary because it doesn't have any cash value so you cannot use the cash value beneficiary the life insured has the opportunity to designate a beneficiary to receive the proceeds upon death so you can decide who you want the benefits to go to by naming the beneficiary other than individuals or states, the proceed paid at the time of death passed directly from the insurance carrier to the beneficiary as, and do not form part of estate. So you don't have to pay estate, ta estate taxes if they go directly to the beneficiary. <clears throat> now, evidence of insurability smaller size group insurance plan may provide a very basic level of group insurance without any evidence of insurability so you don't have to do health checkups and all that stuff to get insurance for larger size group insurance plan it is common to offer the basic amount of coverage including group life insurance without any evidence of good health from the plan members now conversion what happens when you terminate your employment if you have an employer provided plan right what happens when you terminate that employment so what happens when a plan member terminates the employment and therefore loses entitlement to the group insurance she is given the opportunity to convert the lost coverage up to 200,000 maximum to an individual life insurance policy without providing any evidence of insurability so you can stop that group plan and convert it to an individual plan up to a 200,000 maximum other events when an individual may be eligible to convert to an individual life insurance without providing evidence of insurability includes a plan member's loss of coverage upon reaching the maximum age or termination of the whole, whole employer plan now disability provisions are also there many group life insurance plan includes a disability waiver or premium provision where the premium of the members plan right is waived if the member is assessed with disability so disability means if the member has some disability then the premiums stop 
then they don't have to pay any premiums on the life insurance contract this can be valuable benefit when the plan member requires protection but due to disability may not be able to offer those premiums so how much premiums are charged when an employer purchases a group insurance plan the composition of the group covered has a direct impact on the calculation of premium with life insurance the age sex and occupation of the plan members within the group will affect the premium a new premium rate is set each year based on composition of plan members within the group now how does the taxation of group life insurance work premium for group life insurance paid by the employer created taxable benefit to the employee so most of the time your employer is going to pay premiums right and you're going to like have those premiums as a taxable benefit the group life insurance premium is tax deductible expense for your employer the death benefit is paid tax free to the beneficiaries so the benefit you get from the group plan is completely tax free so who is it appropriate for so group life insurance is the primary source of insurance for significant number of canadians because they are very common and group life insurance tend to be the core benefit with most employee group plans when the group plan insurance offer coverage amounts that are based on two or three times of individual salary some for some people this may appear to be a substantial amount of coverage but because the coverage is dependent on continued employment in the employer's continuation of the group plan the coverage could disappear suddenly when the in individual changes job there may be a period during which he has no group life coverage so that completes the permanent insurance plot